Hey guys, I apologize for the preparedness. We are going to be covering MGRS map reading today. It's just going to be some of the basics. I'm not going to go full in depth because this can become an art form. But I still need to get this stuff put up. So, thank you for your patience. How's everyone doing today? I've talked to some of you before the, the stream started here. It looks like everyone's doing pretty well. Duck of Doom flied Russian jets. Very that. Scat, no spoilers. God damn it. Okay. I think that pretty well sums this up. Now, gotta find this other window. Here. Switch. Okay. So this particular website, mappingsupport.com, then you can set it to coordinates MGRS with Google Maps as the background, is going to be a great way for me to demonstrate how these things work. There are two things you need to remember with MGRS that are um, very helpful in your application of using the MGRS. The first one is a, a memory aid right up her skirt. Um, that's something that one of my NCOs taught me and uh, taught the rest of our group when we were having issues reading MGRS. Essentially, you start at the lower left corner of any given area and read right and then up. Not up and then right, but right and then up. As long as you're doing that, you're reading your easting, so distance from origin to the east, and your northing, so distance from origin line to the north, and that's the order in which MGRS grids are displayed. Uh, bring this to full screen. Let's see. Let's take this to the caucuses so that it applies more directly to what we're doing. Probably see some familiar grid numbers if you've tried using MGRS grids. Bam. 37 Tango, 38 Tango, these are probably starting to ring a bell now. Uh, everything but the farthest west peninsula of, of Crimea falls under the 37 and 38 Tango identifiers. And as you can see, the entire map is broken into these identifiers, which we go away now. That's fun. well. Not working like I expected. In Twitch style, it, we'll do it live. Now, as you can see, each of these identifiers is broken into subregions, identified with two letters. So within the 38 Tango grid, this is the Mike Papa grid square. You'll also notice that inside this, they are broken into tens. Got an origin here, pulls across to ten, and then there's another primary line over here. Another 
another region. Mike November down below this one. Mike Papa above. So our origin here. Orient this like so. Our origin is down in the lower left corner. So if you wanted to find something along this river, you'd start at the bottom, move across to the grids with that in it, look straight up and say, okay, so this is this is in the four, and you read up. And this is the base, so this is in the three. So that's your your four digit grid is Mike Papa four three. And a lot of times fighters will use this in DCS when they check the F10 map to try and help identify an area quickly where you know the region they're operating. The fighters are moving so fast and concerned with so little with where the ground is that they give a four digit grid because a few seconds after they give it, you know, maybe 20 or 30 seconds, they're going to be in this grid. So you give, hey, I'm in this four digit, maybe this corner, you know, northeast, northwest, and then a direction. And then you give altitude and airspeed, and then people would have a pretty good idea to know where to look for you because they can pull up their F10 map and see, okay, I'm over here. So he's going to be west of me about 40K. So I need to turn right because I'm headed south. Okay, and then he gave me 12,000. Well, I'm at 10, so he's just slightly above me. And if you're in an eagle, you turn on your radar, and he said he's headed southwest, so he's going away. So you switch to medium PRF, and voila, you've got a friendly on the radar. Go, okay, well, that's probably the guy who I just talked to because he just told me where he was. Now, each of these continues to be divided into smaller sections. Really awkward. Whatever. So one thing that's nice about this computer thing is that it shows these grids to one side and the other. Um, on a paper map, which unfortunately I don't have any copies with me, I left those uh, securely elsewhere. Those grids will just be displaced, obviously, on a, a fixed spot. So the nice thing about the computer is that they move with you. Um, as you can see, they count up. And they count all the way up to GASP. This is based on meters. Zero or 100. Same thing goes for the northing. So let's let's go to 100, 100 for this grid. And oh, there it is, 100, 100. Now each of these grids represents one kilometer. So from the origin of this grid square, which is Mike Papa 89. Yep, Mike Papa 89. We are now 100 kilometers east of the origin and 100 kilometers north of the origin, which coincidentally is the origin for November Quebec. And that's going to be 00. zero. In the bottom right of the screen down here, you see these two grid locations. And as I move the cursor, you'll see that counting up by hundreds each time it crosses a line. So this is only an eight digit grid, as it's called, because there are, ah, man, that's frustrating. I'll use this one. There are Two grids here that tell you which kilometer it is from the origin of this point, as well as this origin. And then these two will bring you down to the nearest 10 meters in grid resolution. Um, one very practical application of this that I can do here. Your A-10 buddy and you are striking near Zunkar Lake and you just struck a BDRM on the east side of the lake, right on the shore, and your buddy spots something and says, hey, I've got another BDRM in the grid line, or in the tree line to the northeast 300 meters. Well, how are you going to know that it's 300 meters? You could do a little general mental math and estimation and realize that 
about 250 meters east and 250 meters north is going to be kind of close to 300 northeast. So you need to add 25 here and 25 here. So if your TGP was still on this grid and you add 25 and 25, that's going to wind up yielding 9340 and 04, direction 05. One five. So let's see if I can move this over. Four zero zero five one five, and that's going to be about three hundred meters to the northeast. Like I said, this is going to be a a relatively down and dirty. I just want to introduce the basics of this because it can be an art form and learning how to do this on the fly is something that is up entirely to you. There is there's no way for me to make you great at this. You have to make you great at this. Um, it's important when operating near the border of two 100,000 meter identifiers that you identify which one you're in. Um, anecdotal evidence, or not evidence, but a uh, little anecdote here. We were flying the 373rd, and we were doing blue flag operations. I know some of you tuned in to watch that back when the uh, DCS machine was stable enough to run uh, that type of campaign. Uh, for those that weren't aware, it was a live 24-7 campaign. The server would update, save itself, and refresh every three hours and then people would reset their sorties and keep going. The goal was to capture all of the airfields from Tbilisi up past Krasnodar to, I forget what's up here, Anapa, I think? Yeah. So all of these airfields in DCS that were mod or modeled, you had to capture all of them, and farps and towns, and, and if you could capture all those, you won the round, and the rounds would last 10 to 14 days early on, I think. Tell me if I'm wrong, Scat. Anyway, one mission, linebacker and I went up to strike Nalchek, and we wound up kicking ass up there, or, or, or someplace, we wound up kicking ass, and we had to go start striking somewhere else. And I went back, or got shot down, and on the way back, I asked for a grid. And he gave me the grid, but did not give me the identifier, and I assumed that it was the same identifier. So I departed Kataisi, I believe it was, and started heading for the grid that was showing up over on this side, when in fact the grid should have been over on this side. It was very confusing for me, because I plug it in and get this huge distance, and I'm like, this doesn't seem right. Why would I want to fly all the way up by Mazadak? Okay, whatever. I, I start heading that way, and I'm trying to figure out what I could have done wrong, and I'm double-checking the, the grid that I wrote down when he read it to me, and it just was a painful experience. I got about Nalchik before he said, hey, what's your ETA? And I said, well, it doesn't seem right. Can I get a confirmation on the grid? And he gave me the grid, and I said, okay, that's exactly what I wrote. What's the identifier? And he said, 3-7 Tango. And he, he said it in a way like, well, yeah, you should know that. But when you're in the heat of trying to write stuff down and just make all the stars align, it's easy to forget. So that is one critical thing that you need to remember, is that the identifier does matter, especially when you're operating in an area this size or near the border. If you were a, a, a company of troops, you might only have an AO this big or this big. And so the identifier is much less important when you're foot soldiers who can't cross these grids in the matter of seconds or minutes. But that is essentially the intro and basics to MGRS. This uh, this mapping support, I'm just going to copy and paste this directly into chat, and then you will all have a reference to go and just play around with the map. You will notice in A10C that it gives a 10-digit grid. So you'll, you'll see there are um, 13 digits here. There are five to identify which chunk of the world you're in. So in this case, 37 Tango Fox Juliet is which chunk of the world you're in. 37 Tango 
for the 100,000 meter, and you are in Fox Juliet for the 10,000 meter. Everything after that is a descriptor with easting and north, oh, kidding, northing. So 495603, um, we call that fat fingering. You can go, okay, that's 495 is just about half, and 6 tenths puts you, oh, hey, there's a cursor already there. That's nice. Duck of Doom, I honestly don't know. I don't fly the Russian aircraft often enough to know if they operate on MGRS. I don't believe they do, because I think it was more of a, a Western NATO standard that was developed. Um, Scat might know, because he's flown the KA-50, but that's the only one that I recall having any targeting pod capabilities uh, that provide location. I don't know if the Frogfoot does or not. If anyone knows one way or another and can weigh in for Duck of Doom, I would appreciate your input there. Uh, I was going to say, the A-10 provides a fifth digit. So you will see one, two, three, four, and then a fifth digit. That fifth digit just increases your resolution from 10 meters to 1 meter. If you are in MGRS mode in the A-10 TGP and you move your cursor half the length of a or a third the length of a BDRM track, it should move between one and two numbers, easting or northing, depending on which way the tank is oriented. And that's a good way to know um, what's, what's going on with it. I believe I want to start a quick mission on the A-10 now. I'm going to boot up DCS, which apparently has an update. Again. Don't get me wrong, guys. I'm glad you're fixing stuff. I don't mean to sound flustered or frustrated here. For those of you who have... I don't know, Ultra. The... Uh, There we go. Okay. And latitude longitude isn't necessarily bad. There are some advantages to MGRS in terms of of the way your brain thinks about things that are much improved over latitude longitude. Hey Starcat. Let's do editor. I want to add 10 B client. I'm going to put myself. See here where these maps overlay, that's where this border is drawn on DCS. put myself over Kataisi Lake. If you guys have flown 104th server, you've probably stricken a whole bunch of targets right here, right up here, and right through here. Uh, they used to have a map rotation that involved that stuff. Door. Do I...
I'm not entirely sure the way the Russian aircraft start their engines. If it's an electric starter with ground power, theoretically there would be enough energy there to start both engines at the same time. Um, most U.S. engines that I'm aware of use an APU to start the engine or an external start cart, but I don't think there's any aircraft in DCS that utilize a, an external engine starter except the F-86, and I don't know if that's... Um, they're using ground powder ground power as the start cart or or what I'm, I'm not familiar enough with the f86 even to know exactly how they do that or how it's modeled but the a10 for example has an apu which is a tinier much less complicated jet engine mounted in the fuselage between the the engine nacelles and when they go to start it they start that one first and then some of the excess compressor air the bleed air is diverted up into a starter, which is kind of like an air impact, if you want to think of it that way, like an air wrench for automotive use. And it spins a turbine blade on there, which gears directly to the engine, and that's how they wind up starting it. Maybe we'll start, maybe we won't here. Okay, so this is nice. Everything's already cooled down and ready to go. Latitude, longitude gives you your northing and then your easting. But we don't want to use that. We want to use MGRS. We get there with the... Um, control and return functions OBS. We select MGRS and you'll notice that changed immediately. So now everywhere this cursor points, which is mirrored by the little diamond right there, the computer figures out what it's looking at and how far away it is based on its knowledge of the terrain and its knowledge of where the jet is, and it figures out where the crosshair is and assigns it the appropriate grid. So when I turn this and point off to the west, it should roll over to 37 Tango at some point. Yep, right out there. So if I keep flying way out this way, that's 37 Tango. And this is 38 Tango. Um, I think if I was going to do a, a tutorial on creating missions that I would not, and that I would see about Sweet Talk and Scat into doing that. Um, he's a lot more accomplished in the mission editor than I am. I just know enough to get airborne, and that's about it. I can't do any complex stuff, no complicated uh, triggers or anything like that. I I get too lost in the logic of it, and SCAT is much better with the coding and that sort of thing, so... You guys will have to uh, to pry on him sometime when he's streaming. Say, hey, do a Learning Sim Sunday. Teach us. Teach us things. Now, let's see. We'll go ahead and just use this strike map here. Frames are pretty unhappy right now. All right, so 
I can select my right MFD as sensor of interest. And if I use my cursor, once I get this diamond roughly where I want it, wiggle it a little bit, and then it sticks. Now when I turn away, the camera keeps looking at that spot. So you can see now, down here, we're in the 3.8 Tango identifier, the Lima Mike 10,000 grid identifier, and within that 10,000 identifier, we are 29 kilometers, 604 meters east, 85 kilometers, 538 meters north. So let's see, that's there, and I'm flying to this now. So the origin of this grid is going to be right over that way. And it's going to be 29 point something kilometer, 29.6 kilometers this way, and 85.5 kilometers this way. That's the origin for 37 Tango, correction, 38 Tango, Lima Mike. And you could see very easily how if I'd said 37 Tango while reading someone a grid and they wrote it down that way, that they could wind up flying way off towards the Napa or way out in the middle of the Black Sea going, where is this guy sending me? Are we striking a boat? He's talking about tanks. What's wrong with this guy? Is he high? Well, hopefully not. Hopefully he's just an idiot, like I can be sometimes. Gives you the wrong grid. Let's see. Some other useful tool here that comes in with MGRS is this bar right here, and I've covered this before in the A10 tutorial. This bar right here corresponds to this width in meters. So at this range and this zoom level, that bar is nine meters across. So if I put this right here, it should go, it should be eight meters difference between here and there. And if we had looked at those numbers ahead of time, probably could have done a little bit of trigonometry. Yeah, there are awakened machine. There are a few different um, things out there you can use. There's a, uh, is it a Garmin Fortrex 3, 302, 402, I think. I, I don't remember. It's been a while since I busted mine out. But that one is capable of reading an MGRS. And uh, in my own personal opinion is plenty reliable. I never had cause to use it very often, but cross-checking with other other tools, I didn't see any reason that it wasn't good enough for some things. I wouldn't want to try and call an Excalibur with it, but an Excalibur is uncomfortably. Well, I can't think of anything else that I need to try and uh, relate to you guys in terms of MGRS. We've covered the basics of how the, the primary uh, grids work, so the identifiers, the 100,000 meter and 10,000 meter section identifiers, as well as the mechanics for the 10 digit uh, easting and northing grids, and the need to always start at the origin, the memory trick right up her skirt, I realize that's a little dirty, but combined arms, or sorry, not combined arms, combat arms was very male dominated until, what was it, yesterday? So that's pretty cool. Um, what else have we covered and what else? Do you guys have any questions on this specifically relating to MGRS? Have you ever had an instance where someone was trying to use it and something happened that didn't make any sense to you? All right. Well, unless anybody else thinks of uh, thinks of one in the next few seconds or is still typing, then we're gonna go ahead and shut this portion of the stream down.
Oh, as far as entering these in in here, uh, let's. If you're telling someone a grid verbally, it's good to break up and put spaces where this one does. They the display in here works pretty well. You could omit this space between three seven tango and Lima Mike, because five bit chunks of data is good for your your memory. Okay, Awaken Machine. Uh, I'll get to that here in just a second. So if I wanted to tell someone that this was an insurgent compound, we've got pattern of life, and we've, uh, we're standing by for clearance to fire, right? a kinetic strike package, then we're going to verify the grid as 37 Tango Lima Mike. Pause. 30 Niner 21. Pause. 88024. And those little five-digit chunks of information are really easy for someone to remember when they're writing down. So if you give them a five-bit chunk and then give them a pause to finish writing, and then another five-bit chunk, it's much easier for them to copy the grid. Um, if you're in a hurry and you're all operating in the same area and you want to deconflict targeting, and you're using your TGP and everyone else is using their TGP and you're circling, say, that lake, for example, and you want to make sure you're not both about to run in and shoot a Maverick at the same target at the same time and waste the ordnance, then you could call out just a northing or just an easting, whichever is likely to give you the better separation of the two. So if the targets are along this side of the lake, I would call a northing grid, because that part of the lake runs roughly northeast to southwest. And so I would just use those first five. I would say uh, in hot, you know, blah, blah, blah target, from this direction, for Mavericks, target northing 30922. Obviously, I'm still referencing the house behind me, but you, you get the general idea. Now, if I... Let's see. Let's, let's try and refine this question a little bit, Awakened. If you... Am, I'm, you're trying to find your way from a present grid to a target grid. DCS, that's pretty easy because you can check the F10 map most of the time. If you cannot check the F10 map for your location... Generally, you can do a little cheat here and push left control F10, and it'll center the map on your location. So I can put the cursor in the middle and zoom out and know, okay, well, that's much where I started from. Um, if you're trying to find another grid that someone has given, uh, I would recommend, I, and someone knows the shortcut for this, to cycle this while you're in mission. I don't remember it. If you know it, please drop it in the chat there. Um, you can go into the editor, or not the editor, the options screen, and set this as your, your primary coordinate system. And everywhere you move your mouse, it'll give you the 10-digit grid to that location. And I say 10-digit, meaning that it's got 5 here and 5 here, as opposed to 4 and 4, or 3 and 3. Again, the more digits you have, the finer the resolution. A, a uh, Technically, a four-digit grid would be 7768, and generally you would preface it with Kilo November uh, 7468. A two-digit grid is more what we do when we're in fighter jets, and you can see the A-10 is only doing 300 knots here, but it's hollow notes across this grid. So when you go 10 kilometers from 6 to 7, that's only a matter of what? How many seconds? How many minutes? Not many. And in the Eagle, when you're supersonic at 40,000 feet, these numbers change very rapidly, which is why it's important to give a direction. You're trying to uh, identify where you're headed. Um... Trying to find your way from a present grid to a target grid. Well, if I'm trying to find a target grid and someone gave it to me, let's let's say, for example, someone someone. T well, I'll just type this in chat. Someone sends me the grid Lima Mike. Um, we're gonna do eight seven four seven zero. Uh, 
Ike with the answers every freaking time. Left alt Y. Nice. Yeah, no worries, Awakened. And we're also going to go to do four, five, seven, eight, seven. Okay, so if that's the grid someone wants you to go to, you can fat finger it, as I called it before. Okay, they said Lima Mike. Bam, Lima Mike square. So the first one of each is eight and four. I'm going to go eight across, right first. Then I'm going to go four up. I'm going to zoom in. Okay, I was pretty close. Eight, four. So this eight is the first number of the easting, and this four is the first number of the northing. And everything that falls inside this square, you'll see in the top left, should be starting with an eight and a four. As soon as I cross this line, it becomes a nine and a four. And when I go back over at this line for a second, like, oh, and we cross. Now we're back on the left side of the line. You can see how that works when you're crossing lines right there. So now we're going to do 8, 4. Within that, we're going to do 7, 4, 7. I can refine it right up on the top there. 7, 4, 7 for the easting. 7, 4, 7, 0, technically. I'm 2 meters off right now for the easting. And 5, 7, 8, 7 for the northing. About 57. Okay, so the grid they gave me is right about here. It's just next to this town. That's how you can, can zero in and have an idea roughly where to start looking. Um, the A10, I've already done a, a tutorial on how to enter some information in that. But you can go over here and uh, set that up. Make sure you cycle this to UTM mode. You can do waypoint, select a new one. You want mission three. This is going to be T, T, just because that's simple when I can find the. All right, that's going to be three eight tango, and that's already stored. It's going to be Lima Mike. Eight seven four seven zero, and four five seven eight seven. Push it up. Thank you for the follow. Four, check two, I set my HUD as soy. I cycle over here to. There we go. Cycle that to TGT. That was the target they gave me. As you can see, they didn't send me a very good grid. I'm looking at the side of a hill with nothing on it. Thank you, asshole teammate. Can visually reconnoiter. Oh, there's a city. Let's see. I'll slave that back to center. Let's inspect this city a little bit. Bad guys over here. No. Armor. Anyway. That would be how you could use uh, the grid to check it out on the map and a little quickie on how to store it back in your computer there. Okay, does anyone else have any questions? Give this a few more seconds and then we'll transition on and I'm going to do some other kinds of streaming here for a little bit. And uh, then we'll move forward. Fun.
How does Scat feel about doing a little bit of uh, Saber MIG dogfight action? Or Saber Saber, even. I've already got one of those missions set up. Very welcome, Awaken Machine. Glad to help. Okay, in the absence of other questions, we're going to go ahead and shut this part down. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully it wasn't too terribly boring. Um, MGRS, as long as it's properly modeled and the sim you're using, is something that's universally applicable. So it's not exclusive to DCS. I just chose to exemplify how it can be used in DCS so that I stop hearing people give grids in lat long. That That is a functional method of doing it is very confusing because ground pounders are not going to give you flat long grids. They're going to give you MGRS grids because it's easier to think about targeting when you can just picture, okay, I go this many meters east, this many meters north, and I can translate this location into that location in my head quickly and easily. Especially also because of the measurement bar on here. see as it gets farther away because of the uh, the width of that the fact that it's an angular deviation that distance increases and begins increasing rapidly the farther away you get so that that bar is just under two or 300 meters long on the summit of that hill over there hey flyboy Gus you just caught the tail end of us here all right, thanks everyone for tuning in. We're going to go ahead and shut this portion down, reconfigure, and then I'm going to do some other streaming here in just a minute. Take care, everybody.